It's time now to look back on one chapter of the very special history that we have around here as we talk once again about the pride of Merseyside. Local historian Lee Rymill from historyofliverpool.com is with us and today we're going to be talking about the Civil War during the 1600s and I would touch this part of the country. In fact, it was a war within a county. It's even more than that. It, w- it would have been within a county, but within the whole country, um, the, the war took place. And basically, yeah, it, it's, it's a war with, um, by two sides, um, you know, vying for who's going to control things. And the two sides were basically between those who wanted King Charles and the king to run things and those who wanted Parliament to run things. So there wasn't really like foreign um, enemies as such, but it was groups of people might even have been like brothers and sisters. Um, fighting each other and the thing to note about this is is that it killed more people as a percentage of the population than both the world wars combined but not much seems to be known about it you know today so what does this have to do with liverpool then lee well it was a lot went on here okay so liverpool was controlled by two um royalist families the stanleys and the molyneux and the idea was that the king wanted a shipping port to help with, with another fight that was going on in Ireland, and this allowed him to move, um, you know, weapons and, and trade and stuff back and forth. So he, he wanted Liverpool as a port, basically. And as an aside to this, what what I found out is that um, lots of Irish people at that time moved over to Liverpool in the 1600s because of this sort of like religious um, conflict. That, that was that was going on over there, and and I, and I think um, as as a like, consequence, this might have been where the, where the and a, a kind of early version of the Scouse accent comes from. Right. Because um, digging into this, I found that even by the 1700s, the people have noted that the, the 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 accent in this area was different from the rest of Lancashire. So you know the, the Scouse accents might be a lot older. Than what people think, and and this is this period is maybe where it all starts. Yeah. So did Liverpool see any battles during the Civil War then? Well, there were there were a lot, yeah, and they went on, you know, right in the centre of town. So um, the the first one was a battle that took place when um, a Parliament stormed the, the castle that was owned by the, the the Royalists, if you like, and took it over. And that was a fairly sort of short-lived affair. But the main um, the main battle that took place was in in June of 1644, known as the Siege of Liverpool, and this is when the Royalist army brought 13,000 men to take control of the castle. Now, to put that number in context, the population of, of town was about only about a thousand people at the time. Yeah. So you know, it's got to have been like an enormous number of people descended here, and it took about you know, two or three weeks of fighting right in town. And the claimed um, uh, uh, reported 1,500 lives with 100 barrels of gunpowder used. And and the, the carnage was so bad, it took them six months to fully clear all, all the bodies from town, you know. So oh. it, was a, it was a heck of a battle, you know. So what I, what I can do is, Sean, I, I'm, I've plotted based on an old map of the, the Civil War time. I've plotted you a little, um, like a walking tour of the city, like a circular route. So, do you want to come on this, come on this walking tour of, of um, Liverpool with me? Let's go, pal. I'm all yours. Go on. Okay. So, imagine this, right? You close your eyes and imagine this. You're walking out of um, Radio Merseyside on Hanover Street, right? And uh, turning back on yourself, looking at what is town today. I mean, it would have been all fields, basically. You'd have um, you'd have seen the big tidal pool, which is where Liverpool's name comes from. So this is a big inlet of water that came in from the river, all the way through um, Paradise Street, Street and, and Whitechapel, right up to where St George's Hall is. Um, okay, now remember that none of those buildings and streets were there basically. So you'd have noticed that that would have been the first thing you'd have seen this big stream coming through. Now this stream, the, the pool. It was like 30 metres wide apart. So you, you're going to cross this, OK, on a small bridge. And that bridge was basically between where Church Street and Lord Street are today. Right. Uh, and at that point, you'd have seen a load of cannons pointing towards you for, you know, in case the enemy advanced through that, through that line, you know, through, the, through that bridge. So then you, so you're walking up Lord Street now, OK? And in front of you, 
where the Victoria Monument is today, you'd have, of course, you'd have seen Liverpool Castle. That's where it was. And in front of that castle, you'd have noticed um, what's called a cooking stool, where people would have been ducked into the water, you know, like like for witchcraft and criminality, oh, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So you'd have made a quick uh, a quick a quick exit from that and turned right, and this would have been around like Dale Street, Tide Barn Street, where, where the main kind of pubs and shops would, would have been. That's what you'd have known. You'd have known that as town, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this time, past that, there was a huge defence line built, like a big mud wall that ran right around basically what is Leeds Street, at A Road that hooks the edge of the city. And um, and then you'd have finally crossed on another bridge where that um, walkway that they just pulled down, yeah. it would have been about there. Yeah. There'd been another bridge going across, you know, so that's how you'd have got around town. In that day, you know, and all the, all the time you'd be walking around at the city at this time, the town at this time, you'd have been looking up over Everton Brow, and that's where you'd have seen the army, um, the Royalist army. These 13,000 men were camped right down there across Islington and, and London Road and Coppers Hill, okay. um, you know, so they could look down onto the city. So you, you have had to dodge them before you get back to, um, you know, Radio Merseyside. So what's the connection then with Everton and Prince Rupert? Did that happen around that time? Well, this is it, yeah. The, for those who, 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 if you know your history, if you know what I mean, the um, Prince um, Rupert is is where um, he was the he was the leader of the, the royalist you know assault on onto Liverpool. He was um, he was kind of like the superstar of, of um, cavalier of his day, and he had a you know fancy cap with the feathers in it, and um, he had a, a pet poodle. Which he held under his arm when he when he went into battle, you know, and they thought this poodle could catch bullets in its mouth and stuff. So he was, he was a real, uh, you know, mm-hmm. larger than life character, and and he lived up on um, he was stationed up on Everton Brow, and and that's where the name of the, the the tower comes from. That's that's now proudly on the Everton badge. It's, it's called Prince Rupert's Tower, um, but it, it was built, funny enough, um, about a hundred years after he lived up there. So you could say the Prince Rupert's Tower is more named after him, um, you know, in his memory rather than something that was built or used by him. You know, that was a that was a kind of lock up. It was a jail in in Georgian times, I think. What remains? What any traces of the actual battle left there today, Lee? Well, there's there's, there's not much um, left of all this now. I mean, the things that have been found subsequently are um, are, are the following. You've you've had a bit of a a tunnel that's been found through this, like there's many tunnels through Liverpool, but one of these things goes underneath, uh, they found it underneath St. George's Hall, and it dates from this period, and this tunnel is, is believed to have come from, from Everton Brow, um, underneath that, that area, right down to the, the, the waterfront, because there's parts of it have been found there as well, and they thought that Rupert used this to smuggle treasure out out of the city, you know, up back up to Everton Brow, you know, mm. where, where there's a belief that some of it's still buried, you know. So that's a, so that is a bit of something left, and um, and there might have been something that went on in in, in Childwall where where things have been just been found like cannonball and and swords from the time by the by the Childwall Abbey pub. There's a, an area mm. called Bloody Acre Field, and and that might have had some kind of skirmish from it. Um, and, and the only other real things that have been found are like the lines of trenches and the defences that were found as really from Victorian times. As um, So as St. George's Hall got built, for example, they found evidence of where, where some of those battles would have been on, you know, on Lime Street and these trenches that were dug. You know, but the old castle really got, got, it got destroyed pretty much in, the, in this conflict. So much so that within about fifty years, it was, it was, it was a mess, and they pulled it down. And and the weird thing is, the the the, the bricks from Liverpool Castle went to be made into Liverpool's first dock. Um, you know, so it's kind of like where one chapter of the of the city's history ends, another one begins. You know, it wow. it took the Civil War and the, and the castle getting wrecked for for the first dock to be built in a way so you know this these things kind of move on well, there you go the pride of merseyside yeah. another fantastic story from local historian lee Rymill from history of liverpool.com and uh, the civil war during the 1600s and how it touched our part of the world 
uh, in a massive way. Lee, it's always a pleasure to talk with some fascinating stuff, as always, and thank you for your time today. No problem. Thank you, Sean. It's a pleasure. It's fascinating when you come to think about the things that happened all them years ago. And uh, many thanks once again to Lee. That's Lee Ryan Miller. If you want any more information, it's from the history of Liverpool.com.